It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is my friend Joshua Mills, and we're going to be discussing his latest book, Creative Glory, Embracing the Realm of Divine Expression. Joshua, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me on. It's an honor. It's great to be here. Well, I'm so glad to have you back. I was looking at my notes and it's not quite been two years. We're getting close since you were last on the show. Mm -hmm. And every month the show grows, we get new listeners and viewers. So uh, let's kick this off with maybe a the elevator pitch version of the Joshua Mills origin story. So for people who are encountering you for the first time in our chat today, give them a little bit of context. What are a few things they should know about you and your ministry? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I've been around for a while. I think it's like 25 years we've been doing ministry and I've been to more than 80 nations around the world. Um, I started out as a praise and worship leader, wrote a bunch of songs at the beginning um, I still have a heart of worship. So everything I do flows from that place. I've written more than, I think at this point, it's over 30 books, including study guides. And um, yeah, I just love to travel with the message that praise changes the atmosphere. And I love speaking about the glory of God. Oh, and oh my gosh, I'm married. <laughs> I have a wife. She's beautiful. Jana, Angela, and we have three amazing children, Lincoln. Liberty and legacy. They are my most cherished gift from the Lord for sure. I'm glad you fit the most important things uh, in there at the end. I always say, man, yes. if we didn't marry well, none of us guys would be able to do even half of the things that we get to do uh, in work and in ministry. So <laughs> thank, thank you for so letting true. us know about them. I wouldn't want that to go poorly if you hadn't let us know about them. <laughs> um, it, I'm always curious, and just as a publishing guy, you know, working with so many authors, I know. I always feel like we're kind of pregnant with a message. It kind of gestates and there's a season where it's destined to be released into the world for you. Like when, when does this creative glory message start to stir within you? And, and when did God let you know that, you know, this was the season for this message to come to life? The crazy thing is the message of creative glory actually was stirring in me probably back as early as 2002. So that's like 20 years ago. Wow. And that's the first time I ever preached a message called Creative Glory. And um, God's been developing in that, that in me for many, many years. But it was back in 2019 that I started to get downloads from the Lord as far as the season that we we're moving into. Of course, I never saw, well, I shouldn't say of course, but I mean, for me, I never saw the pandemic prophetically coming. And yet there was things that God was giving me speaking into it as tools, keys that would be needed for the days that we we're moving into. And so when it all kind of hit and it took the whole world by surprise and it took, you know, Janet and I by surprise and our ministry by surprise, God in his grace had given us this wonderful message about creative glory. And I knew that this is what he was speaking about was these days that we were entering into. And part of creative glory is that, you know, as long as you're in creative glory, you're never without hope. There's always a solution. There's always a way forward. Creative glory really is the inspirational flow of the Holy Spirit that shines his, his life, his joy, his grace, his peace, his wisdom into any situation that we're facing. And so I'm so grateful that God has given me this message. And I really believe that it is a message for the body of Christ that's needed right now in this time. And, you know, just knowing you mostly, I, I first encountered you because of your worship music. Uh, when I saw the book, I was like, man, is this a book that's only for creative people? Uh, so for the person who sees your book and goes, I'm not a very creative or artistic person. Is this book for me? Uh, who did who did God give you this message for? Well, this book is for everybody. I mean, it really is. And I think when people see that, a lot of people, when they see that we're creative, they think that's not me. I don't identify as a creative. Um, that's for somebody else. But the truth is in Genesis chapter one, verse one. You know, there's so many ways that God could introduce himself to us at the very beginning of his book. And it could say in the beginning, God was all knowing or in the beginning, God is all powerful. There's so many things, that could, but it says in the beginning, God created. And I think that's a major revelation that God wants to give to his people, that he is the creator. And when we read on in Genesis, it gets to the part where it says, you know, God created mankind in his image. And 
in other words, it was the creator creating creators. <laughs> and so the truth, although the facts may feel a little bit different, the truth is that each and every believer, each and every child of God is filled with the creativity of God. And that's divine creativity. I was speaking to someone recently and I said, you know, um, oftentimes when we think about creativity, we think about the painters and the musicians and the dancers and all the creative arts. But somebody that's a problem solver, I mean, that that is divine creativity right there. Thinking outside of the box, bringing answers to problems that seem to not go away. Uh, problem solving is a huge realm of creativity. And that's probably more on the analytical side. And yet it is creative glory in action. And so this book is written for every single person to discover their God-given creativity, whatever that looks like. And it's different for all of us. But my prayer is that this book will help people come into and flourish in the creativity that God has called them to operate in. Well, and I have a, a little story I'll share. I'll share one of the ways God kind of stretched me last year. Uh, we were out in Reading meeting with some authors and people who are part of Bethel's tech school out there. And we sat down with this couple and the husband is this gifted analytical math genius computer programmer <laughs> guy. And he told us about when he was in grad school, when he would run into complicated problems, he couldn't figure out, he'd go to sleep and he would dream and angels would show yes. up in his dreams and literally give him uh, like formulas and equations for him to use in his work. And he'd wake up and he'd have this download that he got from the angel in the dream. And it would solve the problem or it would bring the, yes. the breakthrough in the project. And, and once I heard that, I was like, okay, I've, I've really put God too much in a box for all the ways that he wants to show up, uh, even, even in things as mundane as math equations to solve problems. Uh, God Absolutely. has something for us in that space as well. Uh, I, next, I think I'd just love, love to have you talk to us about kind of what does it look like for us to press into and kind of host or create an atmosphere for creative glory to flourish? Because you know, this could look like something in our home. It could look like something different in our workplace, yeah. in our ministry context. So in terms of, you know, creating the the environment so it's just ready for God to flow in this way, what does that look like? Well, you know, I think obedience is like huge when it comes to any kingdom reality. Um, obedience to God is always going to position us for whatever God's wanting to bring into our lives. When it comes to praying in this season for what God desires to release. I think a better prayer is not so much to ask for creativity because it's already been given. We've already got it. I think the better prayer is probably asking God for boldness. And I think as we pray for boldness, that gives us the courage to step out, to take the first step, to show up, to put the paintbrush to the canvas, so to speak, and just do what God is asking us to do. And I think in that kind of atmosphere, anything is possible. When we're willing to be bold with God, when we're willing to move in the spirit uh, through willing obedience, um, I love that you were sharing that testimony about the man who was getting these downloads in his dreams from angels. You know, I have a whole chapter where I'm speaking about angels of creativity. And, you know, this is a, a heavenly reality that's available for the people of God. Um, I think it was Michelangelo, and I share this in the book, but I think it was Michelangelo that was uh, creating a sculpture. And he said, I just keep on chipping until I unveil the angel inside or something like that. And, um, you know, God is releasing his angels of creativity in this day to help us create what God is leading us to create. And I love the mystery of the divine supernatural realm. I love all of the aspects of the glory. And as we give ourselves to the glory of God, we can expect for him to lead us and direct us and guide us and send the help that we need, bring us to the doors of opportunity that we need, making the right connections with the people that we need. And in all of that kind of atmosphere, we can flourish creatively, like huge. And I know the, the book's been out for a bit. Uh, and. Uh, you seem to be very active and engaged with your readers. I know you guys will often do teachings and study groups with with your your followers. Uh, I'm curious to hear, are there any out of the box and unique ways that people who've read your book applied this message, maybe even in spaces you're like, I never saw that coming? 
Well, we've been getting a lot of testimonies back. Like when people actually take the time to read the book and to put the principles into action, people are getting results. Just last week, I was out in Phoenix and um, I actually was doing an interview with Katie Sousa, who I'm sure you know, Katie. And um, we were talking about creative glory and God began to download the revelation of creative glory to Katie as we were speaking about it, as I was bringing these revelations out from the book. And actually God is leading Katie to do something that is totally out of the box, totally abnormal for her. You know, being a, a minister and an evangelist, she told me that every time she ever tried to grow a plant, it actually died. And yet God's begun to speak to her about being a farmer, which is amazing. And yet creative glory is like a huge part of that. Now, I think we need to remember that in the word, it tells us that the Holy Spirit will teach us in all things. And sometimes we look at that word, teach us in all things, and we're thinking spiritual things or sp thinking about, you know, um, evangelistic things. And although he can certainly teach us in those ways, all really means all. And whatever we need to know how to do, the Holy Spirit is available to teach us in all things. And so the Holy Spirit's teaching Katie how to be a farmer. We've had people um, read the book and they say, you know, God showed up to me and gave me a dream or spoke prophetically or led me in this direction to do something different with my business. I mean, I remember years ago preaching in Singapore at a full gospel businessmen's conference and teaching about the glory of God. And in that meeting, there were downloads that began to come in the spiritual realm to people and people began to reach up and grab hold of them. And this one man from California who owned a large bakery um, that was distributed to a lot of different grocery stores, uh, he had been praying and asking God for a solution to a problem that they were having in the bakery as far as being able to create more pastries in the space that they had and be able to um, even make a, a higher end, uh, I guess, um, a higher end kind of pastry that they wanted to distribute. And all that came in the atmosphere of glory. Um, in the atmosphere of creative glory, God begins to supply for all of our needs. And I think that reminds me of, you know, Philippians 419, where it says that it's from his riches and glory through Christ Jesus, that divine provision comes into our lives. And so God is doing this. It's an active thing. It's a stretching thing. And for each and every person that reads the book, they're going to have a different, everybody's going to have a different experience and have a different outcome as far as what that creativity looks like. Well, and I'm excited for books like yours and other messages I've seen in the past two years. I feel like God's really pushing us to get outside of our comfort zone, kind of leave our boxes behind where we, we would relegate our spiritual experiences to Sunday in this context and that context. And I feel like you know, God, God wants us to let the kingdom flow in every place we have influence, every place we're operating 24 seven. And it feels like such a paradigm shift because it's maybe not how we are brought up yet. But continually, I just, I just feel like that these are the sorts of messages that are going to help people break out of the, the mold that they've been stuck in and see God show up in places they never even thought he cared about uh, being a part of what was going on in their lives. Uh, I always say, and again, if I had a dollar for every time I've said this, I could probably retire from publishing. Uh, but I feel like when we put a message out there, you know, we're setting ourselves up to be the poster boy or the poster girl for the message. So people expect that this is how we flow. This is what operates in our life. Uh, often I see that when you write a message, God will put you in a season to turn back to your own message for encouragement yes. or direction. So for you on this side of the journey, is there any time or any way that God's brought you back to this creative, creative glory message to solve a problem in your own life or, or just walk something out in a season? Oh, every single day. I mean, we are in unprecedented times and this creative glory message is ministering to every single area of my life. I mean, it's, it's helping me to be a better father. It's helping me to be a better husband. It's helping me to be a better minister. It's helping me to find creative strategy. I mean, constantly we're looking for creative strategies to navigate the days ahead. And even, I mean, our life over the last year, I, I was literally finishing writing this book as I was moving out of one home into another home and looking for another home because of just the way we had to juggle all the balls and make everything move. And I felt like I am literally living this message as I'm writing it. And since I've writ written it, I've still been living it every single day. I mean, really. And uh, it would take too long to tell you all the, the things that God is doing, but 
one of the things about writing is that I always find myself writing the book that I myself need in that season of my life. And uh, I think some of it is, you know, the Lord takes me to the scriptures and I find so much encouragement, foundation, growth through reading the word. And I need to, I need to get all of that and I need to align it all properly. And so I, I put it into a book, but then also throwing in those testimonies and reminding myself of the goodness of God and how he's come through for me in the past and what I've seen him do in the past, it really opens up prophetically a doorway for me to move into even in my future. And so, yeah, every book that I, I have a lot of books always coming out, but it's always coming out of the season where I am and the book that I need to read myself. Yeah. I think on the one hand, on a human level, we're often attracted to write out the issues, write about the issues that we're still trying to work out. And I feel like God in his providence also steers us into those places where like, Sean, Joshua, these are areas I want to partner with you on to work out, to not only bless you, to bless the people who are going to read the book that you're writing. Absolutely. Uh, I, I also love that you just talked about, you know, this kind of spilling over into your family and your marriage and your work life and moving and, and all the places. Again, um, God wants the kingdom to cover our lives in a holistic way where it's just, it permeates everything we do. And so just, uh, that would be my challenge is just, just be open to God uh, covering every part of your life, uh, oh, bringing new things in every area of your life. Don't don't be stuck in the same box you've been in all these years. It's a new season with newer and bigger kingdom assignments, and we can't start. We can't keep relying on that. You know, three quarters empty tank of gas. God wants to fill us up in a whole new way, and so uh, just be willing to step into that and be out of the box. Uh, I think Joshua, the place I'd love to have us begin to wrap is. If you wouldn't mind, I'd love for you to speak a, a blessing or an impartation and encouragement over the audience, whatever God gives you. Uh, I think that'd be a great place to leave them as we begin to wrap up. I'd love to do that. Thank you, Sean. Um, you know, I think a lot of you that are watching may feel creatively blocked. You may feel like you've got a degree of creativity flowing, but you'd like the river to come. And so just stretch at your hands if you feel comfortable. And I just want to release an impartation from the glory, thanking God for what he's doing and working in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I thank you that you have deposited creativity in each one of your sons and your daughters. God, I thank you that creativity was given to us not to be given just as a small little portion, but to overflow into every area of our lives. So I thank you, Lord, for giving those that are watching the boldness to step out in what you've given them to do today God, I thank you for giving us courage and a tolerance for change, a willingness to occupy new territories, a determination to go where we've never gone before and to use all of the tools that you've given us to use for your glory, for your grace, for your goodness, and for your kingdom to be made known on the earth, even as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for that, Joshua. And I know the listeners and viewers are going to want to connect with you, find out where can they see you speak, where can we pick up your books, all the things. Where's the best place for us to discover you on the web? Well, you can go to my website, joshuamills.com. And every single Tuesday night, we do a glory Bible study on our YouTube channel at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And so we would love to connect with anybody who's hungry for the glory. And like we do with every episode, we'll make it easy. We'll have links in the show notes to Joshua's website, as well as places where you can pick up your very own copy of his latest book. It's time to bring this episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Joshua Mills. Once again, our book today was Creative Glory, Embracing the Realm of Divine Expression. And Joshua, I want to say thanks so much for sharing with us today. It's been a total honor and a pleasure to have you back in the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. 